Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Groundhopper Soccer Guides. My name is Paul Gerald, and one of our favorite things about watching English soccer or football on television is all of the goofy and charming expressions that you would only hear in a broadcast of an English soccer game. And many of them have moved over to American broadcast, but only in soccer and only because we heard them first in England. So we've been collecting these things for a long time. You can check the description down below for a blog post about all the helpful terms to know when watching English soccer. But here we've decided to take our 11 favorite and uh, introduce you to them. And it has to be 11 because that is the magic number in soccer. That's the number of players on the field. And of all the numbers in the entire sport, that one is always written as a Roman numeral. And nobody knows why. So <laughs> let's go through the 11 goofiest expressions in English soccer. Number one has to be at a canter. Can you imagine the Green Bay Packers being expected to win a game at a canter, like a pony running around in the field? No. In America, we beat the hell out of people, or we win convincingly. We don't win at a canter. But Manchester City, sometimes they win at a canter. Number two is just a fun English term for running into somebody, clattered. <laughs> You're clattered into, not if it's a cynical foul or a professional foul or a tactical foul. There's all kinds of ways to run into somebody. But if you just kind of run into them, but with a little bit of extra something to them, you have clattered into them. Number three is a whole concept that only exists in soccer, and that is fair result. First of all, in America, we don't really do draws or ties. So somebody's got to win. But even when we have a close game, you would never hear somebody say like, well, that's fair. Like they didn't deserve to win by any more than that. There's no deserving in American sports. There's no fairness. There's none of that crap. But as you can see, sometimes eh, they played well. We played well. We had a few breaks. That's eh, a fair result, but it's always a tie. I'm pretty sure. Sometimes they'll say they lost, but they can't have any complaints. Well, I don't know. There's always complaints. <laughs> Number four is one of these that uh, I'm not sure anybody really knows where it comes from, probably from dice games, but when your defense is really messing up, they are called at sixes and sevens. They can be a lot of things, by the way. They can be at sea. Uh, they can be shambolic. They can be all over the place. It's classic English that they would have a long list of things, as in our blog post, a long list of things for how to be crappy <laughs> or shite. But anyway, you will often hear defenders described as being at sixes and sevens. Number five is one of these that is always only in the negative, and it's cover himself in glory. When somebody screws something up or fluffs his lines, as they say, you'll always hear the announcer say, he didn't exactly cover himself in glory. Noteworthy that no one ever actually covers themselves in glory. This is only in the negative. You don't cover yourself in glory. Similar to that is number six on the list, Again, always a negative, small matter. When there's a big thing coming up, they always say there's the small matter of the FA Cup final, for example. If you have a League Cup tie against somebody from League Two that you're expected to whoop at a canter, that's not a small matter because it's actually a small matter. It's confusing. Number seven, uh, I think this one was invented by Jose Mourinho, now the manager at Tottenham Hotspur. Park the bus. It's kind of an insult, and it's basically like you're not even trying to play football. You're not trying to win the game. You're just going to literally park the team bus in front of the goal and be like, yeah, you're not scoring a goal. There will be no soccer here today, so we're going to park the bus. So if you say that about somebody else, you're kind of insulting them and saying, well, they can't play with us, so they're just going to park the bus. Number eight is one of the all-time cutest expressions, surplus to requirements. And really what this means is that somebody is at a club and then they're not needed anymore or they're not fitting in the manager's plans or whatever, so you get rid of them. You ship them out someplace. I couldn't really find a photo of that happening, so I just thought that must be really sad to be deemed surplus to requirements. And by the way, you're always deemed surplus to to requirements. You're not found to be or become surplus to requirements. You have to be deemed such. These are how things are in the world of English soccer. Number nine actually is not cute or charming or any of that kind of stuff. It straight up pisses me off, and that's the word unlucky. A guy 
takes a pass beautifully on his chest, settles it, moves past a defender, takes a shot, and it hits the post or it hits the crossbar, and the announcer will say, oh, so unlucky. No, he was not unlucky. He fucking hit it too high. That's not unlucky when you hit the crossbar. If you take a shot and one of your own players gets in the way or a bird swoops down and knocks the ball onto the crossbar or any number of other things happens, that's unlucky. But if you just hit it too high and you miss, you're not unlucky, you missed. Number 10, kind of related to that, is this phrase, this used to throw me off all the time, is when somebody just about saves a shot. Now, in the United States, if a guy takes a shot and it's headed for the top corner and the keeper gets up there and just tips it onto the bar or over the bar, he didn't just about save it, he actually saved it. <laughs> but in England, he just about saved it. See, because in England, just about means Barely, he just about got it. And in America, he just about got it. It means almost. This used to really, really mess with my head. And number 11, here's one that is cute and charming that you can completely ignore. Act as if this expression means nothing, because it does mean nothing. Linked with. This is when a young starlet, as they like to say, is linked with some other bigger club as in he's going to go there on a uh, transfer, this doesn't mean a damn thing except either his agent is out feeding crap to the media to stir up interest in the pricing uh, by linking him with some giant club that's going to pay a lot of money, or this is literally just two reporters sitting around in the bar thinking, you know, it makes sense to me that that guy would sign over there at Manchester United. Well, congratulations. You've just been linked to Manchester United. So ignore that phrase. All right, so that's our 11 favorite goofy and sometimes annoying expressions in watching English soccer. If we forgot any of your favorites, be sure to drop them down in the comments down below. Check down in the description as well for that blog post of all the helpful terms to know when watching English soccer. Check us out at Groundhopper Soccer Guides. We publish a guidebook, sort of a travel and cultural guide to soccer in England. We offer consulting services, help you plan your trip. We sell tickets and hospitality packages to clubs all over England and Europe. And we lead tours, Groundhop Soccer Tours. So check us out, groundhopperguides.com. Thanks for watching the video, and we will see you at the grounds.